Get your Santa hat on and prepare for some good old-fashioned holiday hijinks. The Christmas spirit's in everyone. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Christmas-themed TV episodes. Where's Santa? <laughs> hey, he didn't show, but he did leave some presents. For this list, we've decided to only include episodes of regularly scheduled TV programs. That is impossible, but I guess TV has betrayed me. So staples like How the Grinch Stole Christmas and A Charlie Brown Christmas didn't make the cut. Hockey stick! Number 10, Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh, South Park. Howdy ho! Nothing says Christmas quite like a piece of feces dressed as Santa Claus. Mr. Hanky, he comes out of the toilet every year and gives presents to everybody who has a lot of fiber in their diet. When Kyle's big fat bitch of a mom starts a campaign to hide all religious symbols in South Park, Kyle's mom is here to ruin Christmas. It's up to Mr. Hanky to show everyone the real meaning of the holidays. Kyle! The season one episode, as usual, is a commentary for people who take their beliefs too far. Christ. Hmm, okay. The first South Park Christmas special, this episode helped make South Park the show it is today. What with its musical numbers, offensive content, and, well, talking poo. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo, he loves me, I love you, therefore I can see he loves you, even if you're a Jew. Number 9. Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas, Community. Let's head for the North Pole. The meaning of Christmas will be there. The community gang loves to celebrate the holidays. Oh, Christmas joy, oh, Christmas joy. Like when Shirley invited the gang to a Christmas party, only to realize that they all come from different backgrounds. Merry holiday. Uh, actually, I was going to say uh, Merry Semester and Happy New One. However, Community indulges its fans in a big way with this Rankin and Bass inspired stop motion episode. And this is the most important Christmas in the history of the universe. I'm assuming that's why we're all stop motion animated. As you may have guessed, one of the characters is searching for the meaning of Christmas. Well, can it just be anywhere? Like, there? Abed takes the gang on an epic holiday-themed adventure to the North Pole, where one by one the study group is picked off. Now we're talking. The story wraps up nicely, with the group discovering the meaning of Christmas. Or at least, the meaning of Abed's insanity. I feel so much better now. I guess we don't need to be stop motion anymore. Number 8. Death Takes a Holiday, M.A.S.H. Well, well, but in the spirit of Christmas itself. The gang at the 4077th celebrates Christmas with children from a local orphanage. And when a blizzard keeps dinner from making it in time, everyone has to chip in. Better chip in than chip beef, huh? In the meantime, a brain-dead soldier is brought in for medical attention, and the team does their best to keep him alive past midnight so his kids won't lose faith in the holidays. What time is it? 11.25. Come on, kid, we're almost there. With their very own resident Scrooge in Charles Winchester changing his grinchy spots. Remember the old adage, not the size of the gift, it's the cost. And the children getting a Christmas to remember. This MASH episode is typically bittersweet, but the meaning of Christmas is preserved. And because of that, we've got a special present for you. Elf? Fudge. Number seven. A Tale of Two Santas, Futurama. Hey, wanna buy a tiny little kidney? I'll let you punch me for a buck. In the distant future, Christmas is a time of fear and chaos, when robot Santa wreaks havoc on all the little boys and girls in the galaxy. We too often underestimate that murderous brute, better known as Santa Claus. Fry decides to bring back the true Christmas spirit, so the gang travels to Santa's home on Neptune and traps him. He's trapped! Hooray! Obviously, the plan goes awry. Bender gets arrested on Earth and must face punishment for robot Santa's crimes. Santa Claus, I hereby sentence you to be executed at sundown. With a few catchy Christmas songs as the soundtrack. But we gladly work for nothing, which is good because we don't intend to pay. The Planet Express crew attempts to save their buddy by masquerading as a friendlier version of Saint Nick. We're also Santa Claus! And I'm his friend Jesus! By episode's end, all's right with the world. Sorta. <laughs> Number six, the best Chrismica ever, the OC. So what's it gonna be, huh? You want your menorah or a candy cane? 
Hmm? Christmas or Hanukkah? It's the season of choices, when the rich folks down in Orange County must choose between Christmas and Hanukkah, and Seth must choose between Anna and Summer. You gotta choose, Colin. Sometimes you can't have things both ways, but Chrismaka is good common ground. Hey, dip a toe in the Chrismaka pool, there's room for all of us. What's Chrismaka, you ask? Seth Cohen invented it for his Christian mom and Jewish dad, and it involves eight days of presents followed by one day of tons of presents. So, what do you think? While the celebration doesn't mean storylines like Marissa's downward spiral or Sandy's work problems take a holiday, you have got to be kidding me. By the end of it, the meaning of Chrismaka is found. Number five, The Strike, Seinfeld. Let's rumble! After attempting to beat up a man in a store over a doll for his son, Frank Costanza dubbed December 23rd as Festivus. A Festivus for the rest of us! <laughs> a holiday alternative to the commercialism of Christmas. While George is donating money in his colleagues' names to the Human Fund, What is this? The Human Fund. Jerry is dating a Two-Face, Elaine is dealing with denim vest, and Kramer's got his job back at H&H &H Bagels. All right, toss me an apron, let's bagel. It's really the feats of strength and airing of grievances we're most interested in. Until you pin me, George, Festivus is not over. This episode doesn't fail to deliver the laughs, even if it isn't big on the whole Christmas spirit thing. Don't you see how wrong that is? Where's your Christmas spirit? Number four, Christmas special part two, The Office UK. I expecting a blind date and I was worried you were it. The BBC crew uses Christmas as an excuse to bring everyone back together for a two-parter reunion that ties up some loose ends. So I've got stuff to say if people would listen, but they won't. After being made redundant in the show's finale, David Brent has become a traveling salesman. I do sell dusters, but that's about 5%. But amid the season's festivities, he misses his old job. David, you don't work here. You have no reason to be here. Perhaps the story we're most excited to see concluded is that of Tim and Don. Look at this, it's the American couple. <laughs> Their will they or won't they tension is brought to a head when Tim gives her the perfect Christmas gift. A great episode to say Merry Christmas and goodbye to The Office. Do you know that is Frank Spencer? Mm -hmm. Oh, do it again. Number three, Luda Christmas, 30 Rock. Luda Christmas, Luda Christmas. The holidays are a time for family and togetherness. Merry Luda Christmas, everyone. Or in the case of the TGS writers, for drinking and being debaucherous. Well, in this 30 Rock Christmas episode, lessons are being taught all around. Shut the doors. Some people need to learn about Christmas. With Kenneth lecturing the crew on the true meaning of Christmas. It's about getting drunk and hugging your cousin until your mom says, Frank, enough. That's right. And Jack Donaghy's mother trying to show Jack that the lemons are as messed up as they are. Because the lemons are not what they appear to be. The plans go swimmingly, with everyone at TGS celebrating Christmas together happily, and Jack discovering that every family has their speed bumps, even on Christmas. Merry Christmas, mother. No. Don't you lie to him, no. Arthur. Merry no. Christmas, Jack. Tomorrow night, I'm going to take you to a cabin. Number two, Simpsons roasting on an open fire, The Simpsons. And what would you like, little boy? You're not really a Santa, Tubby. Why, you little No, lady? no, Homer. While we also love the Christmas episode, Holidays of Future Past, where we get to see the gang 30 years in the future. Should I have married Nelson? Because we still talk on the phone. Nelson calls you? You can't top the one that started it all. That's my boy. In the first ever Simpsons episode, Homer realizes the family doesn't have enough money for Christmas because they spent it on Bart's tattoo removal. It's a simple routine involving lasers. Cool. He gets a job as a mall Santa. But when that doesn't solve the problem, Homer decides a trip to the track is in order. <laughs> Introducing audiences to Santa's little helper, this one proves that Christmas isn't all about botched tattoos and drunk Santas like we thought it was. It's about love and family. Oh, this is the best gift of all, Homer. It is? Yes, something to share our love. Before we unwrap our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, you brought the vodka. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Christmas time, Christmas time, drinking our Christmas. Mommy! It's okay, it's okay. Brian, see if you can find some duct tape. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Take it easy. Cheers. <laughs>
Well, nothing says Christmas like animal fables in iambic verse. That's what I say. Number one, Christmas party, The Office. One, two, two, three! three. Ah. Oh. Merry Christmas! Christmas is the gift that keeps on giving. So's an iPod. I gave Ryan an iPod. When Michael arranges an office gift exchange, he goes above and beyond by spending 400 bucks on an MP3 player for Ryan. Hey man, I love you. This many dollars worth. When he's not satisfied by the gift he receives, Michael institutes a Yankee swap, where everyone can keep the gift they get or trade it for somebody else's. Why are we doing this? Because it's better, because it's more special. It sounds mean. Shut it. No, it's not. Okay, just give it a shot. Of course, the iPod is the hottest gift, and Pam's finally left holding the prize. But she decides to swap it for the heartfelt gift Jim picked out just for her. Oh my god! <laughs> the yearbook picture! In the end, alcohol prevails as the staff gets wasted and a good time is had by all. Hey, Merry Christmas. Oh. Do you agree with our list? I got a lot of problems with you people! <laughs> now, you're gonna hear about it! What's your favorite Christmas-themed TV episode? Everybody dance now! I think we're off to a great start. For more festive top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You're all fired, each and every one of you. Merry Christmas.